नमस्ते सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग सर वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हार्मनी इन द नेचर फर्दर एंड इन दिस सेशन एंड इवेंट टुमारो वी विल टेकिंग अप द एफएक्यूज ऑफ लेक्चर 19 एज वेल एज 20 सो यस्टरडे वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द फोर ऑर्डर्स इन नेचर एंड वी सॉ हाउ दे आर म्यूचुअली फुलफिलिंग नाउ आई विल अंडरस्टैंड ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड in a more detail the interconnectedness the self regulation and mutual fulfillment among the four orders of nature so we'll study certain details we'll try to see what does the interconnectedness mean how there is self regulation in the nature and how they are mutually fulfilling we'll also study the innateness the natural characteristic the inheritance all the things also for every order in the nature so <clears throat> the way we mentioned the four orders so all the units which are innumerable units in the nature they can be classified into four orders one is the physical order the other one is the bio order then we have the animal order and then we have the human order in the physical order we have units like soil air water metals non metals all such things in the bio order we have the plants and trees in the animal order we have animals and birds and in the human order we have human beings so yesterday when discussing some further details about these four orders we could see how we can make out whether any given unit belongs to a particular order and we can have some more questions related to that how to make out whether this particular unit belongs to one order or some other order now further we can study about the activities of each of the orders so if you look at the physical order the activity is formation and deformation rachana and virachana so formation means two units join together to make a bigger unit this is formation and deformation is one unit is split into two or more units this is deformation so at most if you look at the activity that take place in the physical order there is an activity of formation or deformation so let's say we have a building this building is a formation how it was made by adding one brick over another with some mortar and the brick building got made so adding bricks one over another makes the building this is formation now how does the brick get made so we deform the soil isn't it we cut the soil and then we mold it in a in particular way to make a brick so in that process also ultimately what is happening the formation of the soil is there and then the formation of brick now the building that we make let's say if tomorrow some earthquake comes some is happening is there something like this then the building falls down then again the building goes back to the soil the deformation has taken place so in every physical unit we can observe so atoms combine to make molecules molecules can be broken to make atoms again isn't it these molecules combine to make molecular structures the structures can get de deformed to turn into molecules again so ultimately whatever is happening in the physical order is in the domain of formation and deformation that's all that's all we can do every research that we carry out in physics chemistry right ultimately if you see it is something to do with formation and deformation when you look at the bio order in the bio order there is formation and deformation because as we discussed yesterday also bio order does include the physical order because the same uh, units which are there in the physical order can form in a particular way to make a bio order a unit of bio order the plant grows from the soil okay so the soil is there in the physical order from the same physical order a certain activity uh, makes the plant so in the bio order we do have the formation and deformation so from the seed we have the plant coming up from the plant we have the tree coming up right and the tree goes back to the soil 
So ultimately, there is, inform, there is involvement of formation and deformation here. In addition to formation and deformation, we can see that in the bio order, there is respiration. So there is an activity of inhaling and exhaling of certain fluid, and that fluid is called as air. So in the bio order, we can see there is respiration, that is inhaling and exhaling of air. And the potential by which this particular activity takes place is called as pran. The particular characteristic by which this particular activity takes place is called as pran. So as long as a unit belongs to the bio order, there will be respiration involved. Okay. Then in the animal order, we can see that there are two entities associated with every animal, every animal and bird. One is the body and another is the self. So in the body, we can see that the activities are similar to as we are talking about the bio order. So there's formation, deformation, and there's also respiration. So puppy is very small in the beginning, then it grows into a big dog, right? And the body dies one day. So formation is taking place and deformation is also taking place. Even when the body is uh, alive, right? There also we can see that formation and deformation is taking place. When you talk about the human body, we'll talk in a little more detail about this. So in the body of every animal, formation and deformation is taking place as well as respiration is taking place. They give and take of air. There is inhaling and exhaling involved. In the cells, we can see that there is activity of selecting and testing. So when we are taking that example of calling a puppy by a name called Tommy, the self of the puppy tastes this sound of Tommy, right? And then after some time, it selects that yes, when this word Tommy is uttered, then I have to go to the other person. Earlier, when we were uttering this word, the, top, the self had selected not to move anywhere, but just to taste that sound sitting in one place. Now the selection is to go to the other person, to wag the tail, something like this. So the activity that is taking place in the self is selecting and testing. So primarily, if you see, the development of the self is limited to the activity of selecting and testing. Now, when you look at the human order, where we are there, human beings are there, our body is just similar to the body of an animal, just similar to the plants. So there is formation and deformation in the body, as well as respiration in the body. And now we can see inside our body, formation and deformation is taking place every time, isn't it? So cells are being formed and old cells are dying out. So Every time you can see that formation and deformation taking place inside the body. And also there is respiration. Isn't it? Now, when you look at the activities in the self, something that we have been talking about in detail, there is not only activity of selecting and testing, but there is also activity of analyzing and comparing. There is also activity of imaging. Uh, yeah, did we discuss about these activities when we were talking about the self? Uh, or we just looked at the imagination and uh, we summarily the we imagination about, yeah, didn't talk about these activities in detail with the yeah, the did part or did not your voice got obstructed. Uh, this part was not covered, okay. Okay, mm. so we talked about desire, thought, and expectation. So the, active, the ability to desire is related to the activity of imaging. The ability to think, that is thought, is related to analyzing and comparing. And the ability of expectation is related to selecting and testing. So imaging means that I image, the self images about certain things that the self wants to be either naturally or unnaturally. So there is an image in each one of us, a kind of life that we want to live. 
right? The kind of relations that we want to fulfill, the way we plan to develop, grow in life, isn't it? So we have an image. So whatever desire we have ultimately is in the form of an image. Now that imaging goes further to get analyzed and compared. So let's say if one has an image of being a house owner. So let me be a person so that I am owning my own house. Let not be living in a sheltered house, in a kind of rented house. Then with that image, there's an analyzing how to go about owning a house, from where to arrange the funds, what kind of house do I have to live in? It has it to be two BHK or three BHK, right? Does it have to be have to be in a particular colony? in the city or outside the city? Does it have to be sun facing or otherwise? Does it have to be in a particular apartment or a single story house? So do I have to purchase land and then build a house or do I have to purchase the house itself? So all this is analyzing. So the image is that I have to be a person who has the house of one's own. I do not have to live in a rented house. With that image, analyzing take place, takes place. And with analyzing comes comparing. So when I'm uh, analyzing about owning a two or three BHK, then I'm comparing whether to go for two BHK or three BHK. So this is comparing where, whether to go for a flat in a particular apartment or have a single story, single you know, uh, house uh, like that. I'm not sure what is the word that is used, but yeah, is there a particular word? for a house which is not a part of apartment, is a single story house independent on a piece house. of land. Pardon? Independent house. Independent house. So there do were I have other to... words also, but this is a common word. Bungalow also, call it. Pardon, Didi? Bungalow also, you can call it. Okay. Yeah, bungalow will become a big house. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> So do I have to have a house in the apartment or some independent house or some bungalow? So this is the comparing that it takes place. Does it have to be sun facing or otherwise? So with analyzing comes comparing. And comparing is based on certain grounds of comparison, certain bases of comparison. So this activity is also going on in the self. And with this comes selecting and testing. So when I'm analyzing whether to go for two BHK or three BHK and comparing also, which is better, two or three, what will be supported by my budget, right? Then I make a selection that let me go for this. And whenever I go for a selection, there's a taste associated with this. So if I have to reside in a two BHK house, then I have a taste of living in that kind of house, the space that is available in that house. If I have to go for a three BHK house, there is some taste available again. Now, if I look at my funds, then again, there's a tip that if I have to go for a three BHK house and do not have sufficient funds, then I'll have to take a loan and then I'll have to pay off the EMIs and that will tax me a lot for 20 years to come. That is also a taste associated with this. And that may not be very uh, appealing to me. And then I can opt for uh, going for a two BHK because this three BHK may cost a lot, right? So this kind of, activity keeps on taking place. I'm just taking an example of owning a house. This can also be in terms of going for a particular piece of garment, going for, for a particular food, or planning one's career, choosing one's job, choosing a spouse, uh, choosing a particular lifestyle. So we have to be observant. When you observe, we can observe these activities. Okay, Madan Bhaiya is, uh, Mohan Bhaiya is saying row house. <clears throat> so these are the activities in the self. These are the activities in the self. We have not discussed this in detail. <clears throat> Generally, we take this uh, diagram of the self when we have uh, higher level courses uh, on human values. So presently, we are discussing the content of imagination of the self. We just talked about desire, thought, and expectation, and clubbed all this together in the lower block termed as B2, block two, and we called as imagination. But this is the detailing of the imagination. 
then we left one and two blank there and we just uh, mentioned that this is the domain of right understanding but if you look at this block b1 it has five activities here so we'll maybe talk about this when we have talked about harmony in the existence i will talk about this in detail but this is the dimension of right understanding the violet block and the yellow block is the dimension of thought or imagination so at least in a human being you can see that these five activities are there but there also a development is involved so if you look at an animal in the animal only this activity of selecting and testing is going on the way we analyze the way we compare the way we image this kind of thing is not to be seen in an animal in the self of an animal now here again in our uh, own activities we can see where uh, we are more active are we more active in terms of selecting and testing so there could be different levels of development of the self a human being also living completely with animal consciousness may be more active at the level of selecting and testing so there is some test that the self is uh, going for and for that the self is making some selections right then a higher level of activity of the self would be when we are focusing on analyzing and comparing so you can see by looking at the activity levels of different human beings some people may be more active at the level of selecting and testing itself okay going for a particular test and trying to select by some way or the other there could be some people who are more active in terms of analyzing and comparing right in comparing also there are two parts comparing based on the right understanding and comparing without right understanding so most of the time when we are doing comparing this is also primarily with without right understanding and only half of the comparing or partly the comparing is taking place in the self then with a higher development of the self we can focus on imaging so presently if you look at the session that we are running right now there is some development involved because of which we are able to rise early in the morning okay we spend so much of time discussing such content a person who is living completely at the level of selecting and testing may not find it very tasteful to rise early in the morning in such a cold season right and then to listen to somebody and to think about all such things uh but you can see that we have an image of living a happy and prosperous life something that came as a proposal to us so when we are attending the workshop an image of a happy and prosperous life uh, enters us as a proposal and that slowly starts getting imaged that how i can lead a life of happiness and prosperity right what does relationship mean what does trust mean what does mutual fulfillment mean right what is my role in this existence what is my role in the family so we start imaging such things one may also image certain things otherwise maybe one images to be the wealthiest person of the world the most famous person of the world that image can also work so you can see the level of activity of the self uh, by looking at the expression outside there may be some people who are just selecting to live they the stomach gets filled and the job is done there are some people who will work a uh, little further to get acknowledged by the people to work for the betterment of the people or there could be certain things to go ahead in business expand the business and then you can see particularly when you look at the technical courses that we go for there is a lot of analysis involved isn't it when we are solving the technical problems when we are trying to analyze the theories being presented to us there is also some comparing involved many times you are not able to work directly at the imaging part but some image is there for example we ask the students that why did you come to the institution then they would say that because you want to become an engineer you ask them why do you want to become an engineer then they will say that because you want to earn money or because you want to do some research you want to do something good or we want to do something this or that okay and then you ask them that why do you want to be, uh, do all these things then a the response comes that because you want to be happy so there is some image in the self that by doing all this i may be happy though we may not be able to image the state of happiness in detail 
right? But there is some email that I want to be something and that gets conditioned. So, okay, once I get a job, once I go for a degree, I'll get a job. Once I get a job, I will get a good package. Once I get a good package, I'll have a happy life. A very concise image is there. Whether I'm going to have a happy life or not is something to be explored again, something to be imaged in detail. So if you look at the workshop, what we are trying to do, we are proposing certain things for a happy life. And then we are, our imagination is not constricted to only this getting something from outside and assuming that I will be happy, but rather we are able to use uh, what all is involved in a happy life. And then we are able to analyze and then we are able to make out with that happiness is going to be ensured by mere physical facilities or there's something more to this which I have to ensure a fulfilling relationship. And then we are also able to image that this fulfilling relationship uh, will it be ensured by earning money or sharing money with the other, sharing physical facility with the other, or right understanding would also be involved. Many times we do say that to have good relationship, we have to have mutual understanding. So to have mutual understanding, understanding of oneself is also required. So this way we try to work on the imaging part. So this is the level at with which the self is active in a human being. So at least these five activities are there. Now here also, whether the thrust is on the uh, activity of imaging or analyzing and comparing or selecting and testing can be made out. So if you look at the people in the society, by looking at their activities, by looking at their expression, you can make out which activity is more prominent. Is it the activity of selecting and testing or is it the activity of analyzing and comparing or is it the activity of imaging? This is something that we can make out. And we can make out for ourselves also. Whenever we are having uh, some desire that we are trying to fulfill, have we really imaged our life after the fulfillment of the desire? Isn't it? So maybe when we discuss harmony in the existence, then we can discuss this in more detail. I will not detail upon uh, these activities further. Now there is the dimension of uh, realization here, the dimension of knowing here which is termed as block B1. And on the fifth day, we had talked about certain words like realization, understanding. Okay, Understanding is something that we had been using from the very first day. This word realization was used on the last day of the workshop and the discussion was very brief. But we did say that with the exploration proceeding further, we are able to explore the harmony in the existence. And then we are able to see that existence is coexistence. And what is coexistence? It is the submergence of the nature in space. So this coexistence is the content of realization. And what does this mean? I am able to see the whole existence as coexistence. That is nature submerged in space. So with exploration that continues in me, I am able to reach a state when I am able to see the whole existence at a time. Okay, and that state of the self is called as realization. Now, when I have the realization in me, then it gets authenticated in me. How does it get authenticated? So the gradual development that we had in the self, okay, now gets complete with this realization. Before this realization took place, I had been trying to understand the harm in the nature uh, part by part, okay. I had been trying to contemplate on the relationship part by part. But now, when this realization has taken place, then I'm able to see the whole thing. And the authentication that emerges out of this realization is that all these activities which are written on the bottom get complete. This authenticates the realization that now I'm able to have all these activities in completeness in me. This is the authentication of realization in the self. That gets further authenticated in my behavior, work, and participation in the larger order. And they, that gets further authenticated in terms of undivided society, universal human order, and human tradition. So the authentication is a dynamic activity. What gets stated in me is realization. I'm able to see the whole reality as it is, the whole existence as coexistence. This is the realization. And the dynamic activity associated with this state activity is authentication. 
Now, when I have this authentication taking place in me, then with that the understanding of harmony in the nature gets complete. So I'm able to understand all the four orders in nature, the way they are, their innateness, right? incompleteness. Now, with this understanding of harmony in the nature, incompleteness, a natural determination takes place in me. So if you look at the lower block, this is the domain of imagination. So the natural determination that takes place with this understanding is that now the complete imagination has to be guided by this realization and understanding. So in totality, my complete imagination gets guided now. Earlier it was partly guided or unguided. Now it gets completely guided. So when I'm able to have this determination in me, then it completes the contemplation in me. And that essentially means that I'm able to see the participation in the larger order of every unit in this nature. I'm able to see that relationship of one unit with every other unit in the nature in completeness. So that completes my contemplation. Before the realization took place, I was trying to contemplate on the values one by one, okay, partly. And now with this realization, the contemplation has got complete. Now when this upper block, block P1, gets activated, activated in completeness, then the lower block gets self-organized. So now the imaging is no longer guided or misguided, let's say, by preconditioning. It's now completely guided. So this red arrow, if you see, that shows how the upper block is guiding the lower block. Earlier it was preconditioned. The imaging was preconditioned. So whether by getting a job and getting a good package, right, my life is going to be happy or not was unexplored. But now the self is able to see clearly that happiness is not going to be ensured by a good package, right? It is going to be ensured by right understanding, right feeling only. <clears throat> so in terms of that, now one can plan the activities to have a prosperous life, the activities to have a happy life. So the image transforms with this <clears throat> upper block getting activated. So all these things we have to observe within us. I think when we were doing the practice session, then this was discussed in detail also. And particularly we were discussing about the uh, high-level course in the month of uh, I think August, then we discussed this in much more detail. So now this is guided. Earlier it was unguided or partly guided. Now this is completely guided. No longer dependence on any other source from outside for happiness. The source of happiness is stated in me. And if you see, this is the coveted state for each one of us. This is the state that we really want to be, that my happiness is no longer dependent on something outside. Then only it can be continuous. Whenever I'm dependent on something outside for my happiness, then there's neither continuity nor definiteness, isn't it? Because whatever is there outside is not continuous. One may shower some feeling from on me sometime and may not shower the same feeling the other time. I may get one sensation from the body at one time, but may not be able to get it every time. So, there is neither definiteness nor continuity. But now, when this activity of realization is taking place in me, then my source of happiness is complete inside me. And with that happiness, I am sharing my happiness. I am sharing my feeling of prosperity. So this imaging gets now completely guided with all these five activities there. When this happens, then my comparing, which was partly earlier, now gets complete. No longer I am driven by preconditionings and then trying to compare few things for a happy life on the basis of unguided imagination. But rather I am now comparing completely on the basis of realization, understanding and, con and contemplation. So my comparing is now complete. I will not de detail upon this, otherwise it will take a complete session discussing about various uh, basis of comparing. And when this comparing gets complete, then my analyzing is no longer misguided by uh, preconditionings or influence of certain sensations, but rather my analyzing is now completely based on right understanding. Now, when this takes place, then my testing, which was again partly uh, activated earlier because most of the time I was trying to ensure happiness by 
having some taste from the body. Now I also have a taste of right understanding here and this whole thing has got activated. I have a taste of right feeling in me all the time. And with that tasting of right understanding, right feeling only, we, I make the right selection, right? And this right selection ensures the right expression in behavior, in work, and in participation in the larger order. So when I'm interacting with human beings, then the word that I'm selecting, the man, uh, the various activities for expressing my feeling and thought that I select in my behavior is completely guided by right understanding. It is no longer unguided. It's not that I have spoken something now and then I am thinking later what I have done. Now, whatever I speak, I am able to see that the words will get uttered later. Before that, I am able to see what is my relations with other human beings. Do I have to complement the other or do I have to oppose the other? Do I have to nurture the rest of nature or do I have to exploit the rest of nature? So in behavior, I'm able to have this feeling of complementarity for every human being. You know, the feeling of purakta for every human being. In the interaction with the rest of nature, I have the feeling for preservation for every entity in the nature. And when I'm participating in the larger order, I have the selection for participating in undivided society, universal human order, human tradition, every moment. So that becomes the stage of development right? That becomes the stage of development. So this possibility is there in the self of a human being, but certainly not in animal. In the human being also, we can see that there are certain stages of development. One may be active only at the level of selecting, testing. Then one may be active at the level of analyzing and comparing. One may be active only you know, up to imaging. Now to activate this contemplation understanding also, it does take time. So the process that we are into, what we are trying to do, we are moving from down to top. This is the diagram where it is shown that when the complete upper block has got activated, then how we are active in the lower block. But when we are trying to transform, then we are moving from <clears throat> bottom to top. So then we are able to activate with exploration, uh, partly, part by part, the contemplation, the understanding. Okay. So as I was mentioning that we might be active only up to the level of imaging, but gradually through this exploration, we are able to activate contemplation partly, we are able to activate understanding partly, and then comes a stage when we are able to activate the realization fully. Okay. The realization has taken place completely. So again, uh, going back to the four orders in the nature, GBA. So here we can see, now this is the uh, description of the activity in the self of the human being. So only these five activities have been listed here and we could see how we are active, isn't it? Now this gives us a kind of task to be done at our end, what is to be done here in the self to develop the higher activities. So there's a potential for understanding that potential in the violet block in the previous diagram denoted by block B1 is a potential for understanding. So we are presently active in the domain of this imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, testing, the lower block, the dimension of thought, but we have to work in the dimension of realization also, and we have the potential for that. So we can see a difference in the self of an animal and a human being. In the human being also, we can see the difference in the self of a person living with animal consciousness and a person living with human consciousness. So there is a gradation in the self of human being also. And each one of us has this potential to reach that state. Each one of us has this potential. This is something to uh, think about. This is something to internalize that I have this potential. It's only that I have not given the right priority. So when we talk about the basic requirements for a happy and prosperous life on the very first day, what we are trying to hint is that you have the potential. Each one of us has the potential for right understanding. It's only that we have to assign the right priority. So when you say that right understanding comes at the first priority, with some exploration, we are able to see this priority, maybe within half or one hour, that we are able to see this priority. But when it comes to living, our priority shifts. So at the level of analyzing, we are able to assign the right priority. 
to, to the understanding part in life. But at the level of imaging, in the activity of imaging, there are certain other things which contradict with this priority. And then when it comes to living in our day-to-day -day life, our priority again shifts many times. After listening to the whole content of the workshop also, though we said in the workshop that yes, right understanding comes at the first priority in living, physical facility becomes the first priority again because we have certain unanswered queries in the self. We have certain things that we have not come to analyze. We have not been able to compare. We have not been able to select and test properly. And that's how the imaging is misguided through preconditioning. So the priority takes a, a, a difference in our living. We are not able to assign the right priority to right understanding. And this is something that we can observe within oneself. But when again we are talking about this in the early morning, then the priority is somewhat getting again shifted. So this kind of uh, shift keeps on taking place, a kind of seesaw you know, uh, state keeps on taking place in the self. Unless we are able to activate the higher level activities, this kind of up and down you know, difference in the priority in our life keeps on taking place. But once this activity of understanding in, is getting activated in completeness, right, this kind of fluctuation is not to be seen. So this is about the activity of the self in the human being. So we looked at the activities of all these four orders. In the physical order, we have only the activity of formation and deformation. In the bio order, we have formation and deformation. In addition, we have respiration. In animals, we have formation, deformation uh, in the body, plus respiration in the body. And there's an activity of selecting and testing in the self of the animal. So few conclusions from here. So we are able to see that the self is associated with an animal, but not with the plant. Now, many a times when you look at the plant, we are able to see that there's some activity taking place in the plant, which appears to be selecting. So whether it is recognizing and fulfilling or selecting and testing is also a difference to be made out. So the selecting and testing is a particular word that is being used for the self, right? So if the plant is absorbing water, it is recognizing the relation with water and then absorbing it. Right, it is different from selecting and testing. So, if you look at an animal, you provide the food to the animal, but the uh, dog will select the food maybe based on whether the food is being served by somebody inside the house or somebody outside the house. If somebody outside the house is providing the food to the dog, then it will bark. Okay, even though the dog is feeling hungry, it may not like to eat. But when the food is being provided by somebody from inside the family, it will select to eat. So we can see that there's a difference between the conduct of a plant and an animal. For the plant, it doesn't matter where the water is coming from. If the water has the same uh, or uh, relation to the plant, okay, the plant will recognize and fulfill it, absorb it. If the pressure inside the plant due to water is excess, then the plant will not absorb this. When the pressure goes low, then the plant will absorb it. Okay, as simple as this. But here, if you see the self, there's an activity of selecting and testing. So let us be clear that when the plant is absorbing water, it is not selecting and testing. It is merely recognizing and fulfilling. Here, there is activity of recognizing and fulfilling, but in addition, there is activity of assuming also. So in selecting and testing, there is assuming, recognizing, and fulfilling. All these three activities are involved. Now, when you look at the human being, there also, when we are imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, testing, then there is assuming, recognizing, as well as fulfilling. But the difference that takes place in comparison to an animal is that now this assuming is far more developed. Right? So we have our uh, assumptions which may be much, much more broader, wider, deeper, okay, vast than the assumption that is there in the animal, in the self of the animal. And here, when we are able to activate this potential for understanding in the self, then the activity of knowing has also taken place. So this is the potential for knowing, right? So this is the potential for knowing. Here, we are working by assuming. So when the knowing is ensured, this assuming takes the shape of accepting. 
so earlier the assuming was largely misguided through preconditioning or sensation okay now this assuming has taken the shape of acceptance after the knowing has been activated in the self of the animal there is no potential of knowing right so the class that we are conducting for ourselves can never be conducted for an animal because the self is not so developed so here only assuming is but that is also limited so you can see the difference between the activities of all these four orders there might be many questions arising out of this <coughs> so we'll take up those questions now further we can go to study the innateness of this four orders innateness is the self organization the self organization being in a definite order so if you look at the physical order the innateness of the physical order is existence existence means it exists it very much exists it's, it continues to be as a part of existence it is a reality it is in a definite order so every unit of the physical order continues to be it does exist it cannot vanish now there is something very natural okay what again in fact what is naturally acceptable is very natural also so there are certain things which we have been somehow accepting as being very natural no big deal about it but this is also a content of understanding now when we start questioning certain things then we might have doubts or confusions regarding the existence of a unit of the physical order so this is something that i can come to know that the innateness of the physical order is existence every unit of the physical order continues to be when you look at the bio order there is not only existence but also growth so as we said earlier also that the bio order does include the units activities innateness right of and even further something that we study of the physical order so there is a plus sign here so it continues to be as well as there is growth here so if you look at the tree okay the sapling grows into a plant the plant goes into tree so there is growth involved and there also if you see the bark on the stem of the tree once that becomes dried becomes a part of the physical order and that falls back to the soil so there is no growth in the bark of the tree a old tree right but there is of course growth in various parts of the tree so in a tree also there are certain things which have turned into physical order completely there is no growth there because there is no respiration there so when we call something as wood that wood has completely turned into a physical unit it is no longer a bio unit so wherever there is respiration okay there is growth so addition for growth both are there in the bio order now as we said earlier also that animal body and human body just similar to the bio order so in the animal body also you can see there is existence and there is growth so the body of a dog grows from puppy to a big dog and then right the body dies and goes back to the soil but every atom and molecule in the body of the animal continues to be it's only that earlier it was a part of the body right now it is no longer a part of the body we can see a similar thing for our body so whatever we have in the body has come from outside from the nature right and it has become a part of the body but as we say that every cell has a life of let's say 6 months so the cells i hope i'm correct didi maybe there could be variation in different, different parts of the body so every cell has a particular life so the cell will operate for some time to grow and then it will decompose and uh, go outside the body so we are consuming food one part of the food is consumed and it becomes a part of the blood or some tissue of the body okay a part of the body and some part of it goes away in the form of fecal matter so this kind of thing can be observed so there is existence of the body as well as growth in the body right and every atom and molecule of the body continues to be it's only that it's a part of the body today it may not remain the part of the body tomorrow 
right? The body may not remain tomorrow. So we can see that the body of a human being or the body of an animal or the plant are similar. Now we look at the self of the animal. The innateness of the self of the animal is built to live. The animal wants to live. And what does that mean? The animal has the will to coexist with the This is the will to live in the self of the animal. When you look at the human being, we have the will to live with continuous happiness. So not only this, that we have the will to live, we also have the will to live with continuous happiness. This is again something innate to the self of the human being. This will to live with continuous happiness is not there in the self of the animal. That's why we said uh, that if you provide food to the cow, shelter to the cow, right? The cow is very much comfortable because the will to serve, will to live is served, is fulfilled. But when we look at the human beings, not only that we want to live, we also want to live with continuous happiness. So just by providing physical facility, our will to live with continuous happiness is not fulfilled. Will to live is fulfilled, but will to live with continuous happiness is not fulfilled. Now, if you explore this further, this will to live with continuous happiness is strong in the self of human being. And that uh, is somewhat stronger than the will to live. Many times, to ensure happiness in the self, we may go to certain uh, conditions where the will to live also is a challenge, isn't it? But we want to live with continuous happiness. So if we assume that my respect is going to be ensured only if my demands are met, right? Then I may let the body suffer, but I keep on raising my demand. I keep on talking about my demand for respect in some way or the other. And you can see how the will to live with continuous happiness is somewhat more prominent than will to live. Even this morning, if you see in this cold season, we have woken up, right? And we are uh, discussing certain content, right? If you look at an animal, the animal would have uh, chosen to just uh, give rest to the body. But as a human being, we are, uh, doing so much of activity because we have the will to live with continuous happiness. Maybe uh, the body is feeling cold. Maybe uh, our daily chores may get also affected by this. But since the will to live with continuous happiness is there in the self, so we have chosen to uh, spend time like this. We can also see that the will to live with continuous happiness in the self is fulfilled by right feeling. And right feeling is ensured by right understanding. So this is the domain of knowing, this is the dimension of knowing. So the will to live with continuous happiness is fulfilled only by the right understanding and right feeling. If you have to talk about continuity, if you have to talk about completeness. And that's why this program for right understanding and right feeling is very important activity of the self. Next thing that we can observe is the inheritance. So if you look at the inheritance, if you look at the inheritance of the physical order, it is completely constitution based. So the way the atoms and molecules have a particular constitution, the conduct is exhibited in the same manner. So inheritance essentially means how conduct is decided, maintained generation after generation. So if you look at the molecular water, it is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Right? So if you look at the constitution of hydrogen, it is of one kind. It burns with a pop sound. If you look at the constitution of oxygen, it is a different kind. It helps in combustion. And if you look at the water molecule, it extinguishes the combustion. So there is something that burns, there is something that helps burning, and there is something that extinguishes the burning activity. 
Now, depending on the configuration of hydrogen or oxygen or water, we have different conduct. So completely, if you see, you know, every unit in the physical order exhibits the conduct based on the constitution. This is the inheritance. We can take any example. Right? So for example, when this laptop is being used, so the light that comes from the monitor of the laptop, now the particular atoms and molecules which are displaying this screen have a particular constitution. If you change the constitution, if you do not provide electricity, Okay, then they will have a different conduct. When you provide electricity, they have a different conduct. The way this cursor is moving, okay, this is also a conduct going to the uh, activity of the physiochemical units inside this laptop. So if you can see the constitution of the physiochemical unit, this of the physical order completely determines the conduct of the unit of the physical order. So whatever research that we are doing in the physical order, in physics or chemistry, ultimately it is limited to the conduct based on the constitution. If you look at the bio order, so the conduct is based on seed. So seed will have a particular constitution, isn't it? But in addition, right, it has the added uh, inheritance in the unit. So if you look at the seed of a neem tree, it is so small. And seed of a banyan tree, it is so small. And that same small seed grows into a big tree, either a neem tree or a banyan tree. And that small seed has this uh, constitution uh, in such a way that the small seed can grow into a big tree by uh, utilizing the activity of respiration by growing with innateness that a small seed can grow into a big tree so and if you look at the fruits that will come out of uh, the particular tree the conduct of that fruit is again decided by this particular seed so the seed grows into a plant the plant goes into a tree the tree gives fruits and the fruits has trees and that continues generation after generation that seed will go to the ground and another plant will germ germinate. So this continues you know, generation after generation and forms a tradition of this uh, tree. So that single seed has so much of uh, property embedded in it so that it can grow into a tree and that tree will exhibit a particular conduct. When you look at the animal, the conduct of the animal is based on breed. So the kind of breed that is there associated with the animal, the conduct will be depending on that. So the cow has a particular breed, the dog has a particular breed, a carnivorous animal has a particular breed, a herbivorous animal has a particular breed. And depending on the breed, the conduct is decided. And that breed will include not only the body, but also the self. Okay. But you can see, if you observe it more closely, that in the animal, in a particular breed, most of the time the body is dominant. So the conduct of the herbivorous or the animal, uh, the carnivorous animal, is decided by the uh, structure of the body of the particular animal structure of the brain of the particular animal. So the conduct of the animal is breed based. And look at the human being, the conduct of the human being is not breed based. It is based on something that is termed as education and sanskar. So that's why education and sanskar is very important activity for a human being. And the conduct of human being is decided by education sanskar. So if you provide human education sanskar, one kind of conduct will be there. If the education sanskar process is inhuman, then inhuman conduct will be there. Now, when the human being has right education sanskar, the human education sanskar, then the right understanding and right feeling is ensured 
and by that the will to live with continuous happiness is fulfilled and the next generation is guided the same way so generation after generation and this tradition of living a happy and prosperous life will continue and that's why this is so much of important this holds so much of importance because our conduct is determined so as we saw for an animal the body is the determining factor but for the human being the self is the determining factor so it does not matter in uh, what family we took birth what kind of structure of the body is there so long as we are able to fulfill the need of the self in terms of attention and right feeling this possibility is always there so be it a person from uh, the southern hemisphere or the northern hemisphere the eastern part of the world or the western part of the world born in this particular clan or that particular clan doesn't matter because self is central to the existence of the human being and this is the difference between an animal and a human being so the self is central to the existence of a human being and that's why this education sanskar is very important next thing that we can also observe is the natural characteristic so there are many questions associated with natural characteristics so we brought this also into discussion so the natural characteristic of a physical unit is composition and decomposition so whatever activity is taking place in the physical order by formation and deformation is ultimately leading to composition or decomposition so the formation of a house is composition the deformation of the house is decomposition so if you look at the participation in the larger order which is the natural characteristic it is always in terms of composition or decomposition so the house is serving my need for shelter so the house is participating in the larger order where i am also there and the house is also there this becomes a larger order and by virtue of composition or decomposition it is able to participate in the larger order if you look at the plants and trees which belong to the bio order or the pranic order there's activity of nurturing and worsening so the participation of a plant is there in terms of nurturing and worsening for example when we consume some food so it can either nurture our body or worsen our body and with nurturing and worsening is there along with composition and decomposition so if i eat something which is edible it nurtures my body and my body gets composed further the body is a unit of the bio order isn't it so the body gets composed further but if we consume something which is not edible okay let's say some poisonous plant let's say dhatura if we consume dhatura then our body will get worsened right the body may have certain uh, unexpected activities in the body right and the body may worsen and the body may decompose further now if you see there are four interactions possible here in this nurturing and worsening one case would be nurturing and nurturing so there is one unit of bio order coexisting with another unit of bio order and both are getting nurtured in the process there could be a case of nurturing and worsening so one is getting nurtured and the other is getting worsened the third possibility is worsening and nurturing one is getting worsened and the other is getting nurtured and the fourth possibility is worsening and worsening so i'll take examples of each so let's say there is the baby of a boy of a, of a uh, there is body of a baby inside the womb of a mother so in that process if you see the mother feels quite happy having a baby inside and in that process the baby uh, the body of the baby is taking nutrition from the body of the mother but in that process the body of the baby is also getting nurtured and the body of mother is also getting nurtured right or if you look at uh, the cells inside the body of a human being or when in an animal so one cell is getting nurtured so we take food one cell is getting nurtured and that is nurturing other cells also and how the participation is taking place it is by virtue of nurturing and nurturing so one part of the body is getting nurtured and in that process nurturing other parts of the body also 
so inside the body there is participation of nurturing and nurturing so one example could be a baby and mother's body the other example could be a very simple example would be one part of the body nurturing another part of the body so the heart is nurturing the liver the liver is nurturing the heart both are participating with each other by nurturing and nurturing now when i am consuming food let us say i consume some food okay i consume some spinach plant so the body consumes the spinach plant and the body gets nurtured but in that process the spinach plant gets worsened it gets consumed so the spinach gets worsened and the body gets nurtured isn't it now if we have certain uh, uh let's say amoeba certain things which are not desirable in the body but that is there due to some lack of health in the body the amoeba is uh, developing in the stomach so that amoeba is getting nurtured in the body of me, of my okay and in that process my body is getting worsened so when we have these certain amoeba or certain uh, bio units getting uh, nurtured in the body that is uh, that worsen the health of the human being so we can have that example here then so that process that amoeba is nurturing but the body is getting worsened this is the third case and the fourth case would be when you are consuming dhatura plant then when you consume the dhatura plant the plant is worsened when you consume this and the body also gets worsened in the process so if you see the interaction between one bio unit and another bio unit this will be only of the kind of nurturing and worsening either both are getting nurtured or one is getting nurtured and the other is getting worsened or both are getting worsened this kind of interaction is to be seen in terms of participation in the larger order for a bio unit a unit belonging to the bio order and of, of course the composition and decomposition is involved here now if you look at the body of an animal it is the same way the four example that we took that possibility is there you know, in the body of an animal also that is possibility that is a possibility in the body of a human being also now when you look at the self of the animal it participates either by cruelty or non cruelty so we can see that there are some animals which are cruel there are some birds which are cruel and then there are some animals and birds which are not cruel but again by their cruelty or non cruelty they are participating in the larger order so if you look at the jungle okay there are some animals which are carnivorous there are some animals which are herbivorous now if there had been only herbivorous animals in the forest right and there would have been no carnivorous animals so maybe the balance would have got uh, disturbed so if all the herbivorous animals grow in such a large number that they start consuming all the plants and trees then the balance will be disturbed so there are carnivorous animals which consume the herbivorous animals and the balance continues so the carnivorous animal is also participating by its cruelty in the larger order with the sustenance of the forest and the herbivorous animal is also participating in the larger order in the forest by consuming the plants right so in the self if you see there is participation by virtue of cruelty and non cruelty if you look at the human being the body is similar to the body of an animal right or a plant in the self there is perseverance bravery and generosity in the self so perseverance means when i have this right understanding right feeling stated in me then every time i participate based on this right understanding right feeling never do i get uh, disturbed or never do i get depressed or anxious okay but every moment i am able to see that the happiness is going to be ensured only through right understanding right feeling there is no other way so every moment i persevere on this basis that is perseverance with this perseverance every time i try to be complementary to the other to help develop the competence of the other this is bravery or we can call it bravery okay uh, in hindi this is called dhirta virta udarta we have tried to find out the closest words in english to these three words so every time i try to participate with the other 
with the feeling of complementarity, and that is brevity. And for that, I am ready to invest my self, my body, my physical facilities for the other, and this is generosity. So this is the natural characteristic of a human being, living with human consciousness. And this is possible only through right education and scar. So this kind of participation is there in the self of a human being, which is naturally acceptable. So we talked about all these four orders in detail, talked about their activity, their innateness, their natural characteristic and inheritance. So I think, uh, should we take up some questions, Vijay, or should I continue with the discussion? I think there are just a few points more close, okay. then we'll take questions. Fine, Vijay. Yeah. I mean, because we could have done, you know, after each uh, uh, each column or something, but okay. it's okay. We'll finish this now. Okay. Just a little bit left. So. What could be the participation of human being in the entire nature with understanding? So the participation is, term, is in terms of <clears throat> preservation of the nature and prosperity for a human being. So when we preserve, then as we discussed earlier, there are three programs emerging out of this activity of preservation, enrichment, protection, and right utilization. So enrichment is to add to the quantity. Protection is to maintain the quantity. And right utilization is to utilize that particular entity for participation in the larger order in a harmonious manner. And when I do this preservation, then with right understanding, then of course I have been able to make out the need for physical facility rightly. So my needs are getting fulfilled and I'm able to see that yes, I have enough. I have more than what I require. So preservation and prosperity will go together. If I do not preserve, then my prosperity is questionable, whether I am able to feel prosperous the next day or not, because there will be a dearth of facility in the rest of the nature. And when I am working with prosperity, then I'm in a better state to preserve the nature. So by protecting the innateness, by protecting and enriching the inheritance, and by making right utilization of the nature in line with its activity, so we studied about the innateness, we studied about inheritance, we studied about the activity. So how do I participate in the nature? So I put the innateness, isn't it? So the innateness of the physical order is existence. So I understand it and I act accordingly. I do not try to destroy any entity, just like that. Then the inheritance is there associated with every entity and I obey that inheritance. Okay, so I can, I'm able to see that the inheritance of the physical order is constitution based, the inheritance of the bio order is seed based. So I understand it and I obey it and that's how I participate with it. So I protect the, innate, the inheritance. I also enrich the inheritance, right? And then of course I make the right utilization of every entity in the nature which is in line with the activity. So this is the way I participate. Or at least I do not violate their innateness or inheritance or activity. For example, if you look at the animal, the inheritance of the animal is breed based. So I protect that breed. I do not destroy that breed. I do not try to separate the self of the animal from the body, but rather I try to enrich it. I provide it, provide it better conditions to survive, to thrive. That is by protecting and enriching the inheritance. Similarly, when you talk about the human order, we protect and enrich the inheritance by providing right education and scar. And with every entity, I have the program for making the right utilization. And that, co that of course is possible only when I understand the activity and go by this. So this is my participation in the entire nature as a human being. To explore it further, so to understand the inherent harmony in the nature and to live accordingly, to facilitate a conducive environment for the activity or at least not violate it for all the orders. This is my participation. To facilitate the innateness or at least not violate it of all the orders. To facilitate the inheritance or at least not violate it of all the orders. So when it comes to physical order, what would be the human participation in terms of mutual fulfillment? So it could be 
to facilitate its existence by ensuring the condition environment maintaining it ensuring its constitution for example the constitution of earth so the earth has a particular constitution if we are depleting the natural resources if we are polluting the air right we are uh, making situations for global warming then ultimately we are tempering we are tempering the constitution of the earth we are uh, creating imbalance on the earth so we have to uh, preserve this this constitution of earth right similarly in the bio order we have to facilitate the growth by ensuring the conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring the seed so you can see that uh, there have been so many varieties of plants on this planet so have we really tried to preserve them so for example the seed of rice there is a book by dharampal ji which says that in the 19th century in chatisgarh area itself there used to be 12000 varieties of rice and our farmers were so uh, developed in that uh, sense if you see that they used to preserve all these varieties of rice and every rice had a role to play so in different seasons you consume different uh, varieties of rice depending on the different states of the body in terms of health you consume different varieties of rice you employ different ways of cooking the rice so there were 12000 varieties of rice today if you see there are not even 100 varieties of rice so we have not been able to preserve the seed so if we are able to preserve the bio order rightly then it will of course facilitate our sense of prosperity so we have to ensure conducive environment and maintain and ensure the sustenance of the seeds in the animal order we need to facilitate care of the body by ensuring physical facility by ensuring environment for existence and growth of the body and to ensure its will to live we have to maintain and ensure the breed for the breed of cow so again this will to live is there so yesterday we were discussing about veg and non veg so that discussion could not be completed unless we understand the animal order in completeness so the animal order has built to live okay and many times to consume food we are hampering this will to live which is not acceptable naturally so we have to look for ways where we can nurture our body by facilitating okay the uh, inheritance of the animal order by inheritance of uh, facilitating the inheritance of the bio order so these all things we have to take into account so this understanding of innateness natural characteristic inheritance activities is important because with that understanding only we are able to decide our food in fact if you look at the current state of science today we have not been able to even define food which is a very basic need of the human being what can be termed as food and what cannot be termed as food we are not very clear unless we have the understanding of self nothing becomes clear in totality so we are not even aware what can be termed as food what not can be termed as food whether you have to take food from the physical order or bio order or animal order or human order that is not very clear what is our participation with all these four orders to fulfill our needs to fulfill the need for food for clothes for shelter how do we participate it is not very clear now if you just equate bio order to the animal order so consuming something from the bio order is equated to consuming something from the animal order and then we are destroying the will to live for the animal right which is not acceptable to naturally similarly with the human order we have to facilitate the care of the body by ensuring physical facility environment and for existence and growth of the body at the same time we have to facilitate it, its will to live with continuous happiness by ensuring the human education and scar participating in developing or maintaining undivided society in universal human order so here we have a huge role to play in terms of education and sanskar so it's not only that we have to facilitate the care of the body but also we have to facilitate the will to live with continuous happiness and this is only possible through such an activity which can be termed as education we are able we are able to develop the right understanding and right feeling in the other so this is the human participation for mutual fulfillment now we can further study that natural characteristic 
of human being living with animal consciousness and living with human consciousness. So these are three characteristics which are observed for a human being living with animal consciousness. So one of them is wretchedness, dinta. So what is the meaning of wretchedness? Wretchedness means that I, have, I do not have the assurance that I can fulfill my needs rightly. So in fact, we can add this body as well as the self. So the feeling that I cannot fulfill the need of the body as well as the self, that is state is called as wretchedness. So I'm dependent on something outside. So that gives a feeling of dinta, wretchedness. Cunningness means since I'm not able to fulfill the needs of mine, so I resort to beguiling the other. So to fulfill the needs of the body or to fulfill the needs of the self, right? We are using trickery. That trickery is coming out of this characteristic of cunningness. So the same wretchedness coupled with cunningness, uh, with coupled with uh, clavery or beguiling activity becomes cunningness. Now with the same wretchedness, one may also resort to use forceful means, violence. So the wretchedness is at the base. So unless we have the right understanding and right feeling in completeness, we are wretched some way or the other. With that wretchedness, either we may live as a timid fellow or we may resort to beguiling the other or we may resort to using cruelty, forcefulness. Those three characteristics will be there. So if you look at the state of society today, we can see that there are some people who are living a life of wretchedness. There are some people who are living a life of cunningness and there are some people who are living a life of cruelty. But unless we have this right understanding, right feeling in completeness, we are going to be wretched. Now, with that wretchedness, either we can continue with that state, living like living in fear, or we can resort to cunningness, or we can resort to cruelty. The happiness and prosperity is not possible while living with animal consciousness. These three possibilities are there. When look at the natural characteristic of human being living with human consciousness, then these three possibilities are there. One is perseverance that we discussed. So I have the resolution in me. I have the uh, understanding in me, feeling in me, right? And every moment I'm living the same way. This is perseverance. Bravery is when I'm feeling committed to develop the right understanding, right feeling in the other. I'm trying to be complementary to the other. And generosity is when I'm ready to invest myself, my body and my physical facilities to complement the other. This is generosity. So where we are today and where do you have to be? So one thing that we can observe that unless I have this right understanding in completeness, partly or fully, we are living in the state of wretchedness, cunningness and cruelty. So in one interaction, we might be uh, appearing wretched Right. In another interaction, we might be appearing cunning. In another interaction, we might be appearing cruel. For example, a person goes to another person, depending on the other person, that the other person will fulfill one's need. Okay. Let's say he is begging for something, some physical facility. So initially, he is begging. This is the state of wretchedness, so that uh, the other person can provide something to the first person. But when this begging doesn't help then he resorts to cunningness. He says certain things so that the other person may feel impressed and give some physical facility to him. This is cunningness. But if still doesn't work, then he has a feeling of being cruel to the other, thrash him once, and then he will, of course, give the money to you. So one person is begging money from the other. This is wretchedness. One person is trying to beguile the other to get money. This is cunningness. One person is robbing the other. This is cruelty. So this kind of tendency is of course going to be there when a person is living with animal consciousness. So all of us start from here itself. And then we gradually transform to human consciousness. So this is a little more detail of the state of animal and human consciousness. So nothing to be worried about this. We all start from here, the state of wretchedness, cunningness and cruelty. And then we go to the state of perseverance, bravery and generosity, but we have to see today where we are living now in the state of animal consciousness or in the state of human consciousness. So to sum up, we are uh, having these four orders in nature. Physical order is there, bio order is there, 
animal order is there and human order is there. The physical order has soils, metals, non-metals, all these things. The bio order has trees and plants. The animal order has animals and birds. The human order has human beings. And the nature is collection of all these four orders. There's a relationship of mutual fulfillment that is harmony among the four orders. And the first three orders are mutually fulfilling for each other. They are fulfilling for human being also. It is naturally acceptable to human being also to be fulfilling to the other three orders. And the role of human being is to realize this mutual fulfillment. And for this, all that human being needs to do is to understand this fulfillment and to live accordingly. And we could also see by detailing upon the four orders in nature that there is, of course, provision in the nature for living with mutual fulfillment. Only that I have to understand and live accordingly. So there is every provision in the nature. It's only that I do not have that understanding. And that's how I'm not able to utilize that provision. And many times I'm, pro I'm violating that provision. I'm destroying that provision. So we'll sum up by saying this. <coughs> then I'm not going over the key points again. So we can take some questions. So this question we had taken up yesterday. How do we know that uh, the self is associated with a particular unit or not? So we said that in these four orders, we can observe the activities. So <coughs> in the physical order, there is only activity of recognizing and fulfilling. In the bio order, again, there is activity of recognizing and fulfilling. But in the animal order, there is a self as well as body. And that's how the activity of assuming is also seen there. And here, the self is more developed. So we have the potential for knowing also there. And the presence of self is indicated by these three things. The presence of activity of assuming then develop part of the body that can communicate with the self that is called as brain. And it will also take signals from the human being. But as you mentioned that we can understand the other three orders only when, only when we have the right understanding of the human order. Unless we are clear about ourselves, we keep on superposing certain assumptions about ourselves on the other three orders. And over under otherwise evolution keeps on taking place. Now, another question is there. Didi, should I continue with the question? Or how do we proceed, Didi? Yeah. G, G, you can. Uh, I said that let us go the same way, Didi. Yeah, I think we can take questions from the participants after this one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. G. So... <clears throat> Why are we dividing nature into these four categories? What's the purpose of the classification as such? Is this the only classification? Yes. So if you look at the nature, there are countless units in the nature, innumerable units. So how do we understand them? So to understand them, we need to classify them into some countable categories. So these are the four categories that were selected. And uh, the classification into these four orders, as we studied right now, is based on the common innateness, natural characteristics, activities, and inheritance in each of the four orders. So these are the certain, certain bases that were selected to classify the four orders. If we can classify them on certain more bases, we can classify them in some other way also. So one another base of classification would be to look at the consciousness part. So if some unit in the nature is exhibiting consciousness, then it can be termed as a conscious unit. If some unit in the nature is not exhibiting consciousness, it can be termed as material unit. So another way of classifying the nature would be into consciousness and material units. And here, when we are talking about order, we are basically talking about the participation. We are looking at the participation. We are looking at the fulfillment. So that's how the nature has been categorized into these four orders. And we can see that in one order, we have the same innateness, same natural characteristic, same activity, same inheritance. So this is the basis on which the nature has been classified. And we can study it further. In a particular order also, we can go to classify that further. So in the physical order also, we can go to classify further. So there are some elements and then there are some compounds in the physical order. In the compounds also, we can have another series of compounds to understand. We can have another series of elements to understand. So based on the innateness, natural characteristics, activities and inheritance, we have classified the nature into these four orders. And in each of the orders, again, we can classify that further. 
in the physical order. Similarly, in the bio order, we can classify further. We can call something as one kind of plant and something as another kind of plant. And this study has, of course, been done. But if you see the way we are proceeding to classify or understand the nature, uh, the understanding of the self is at the base. <clears throat> in the present day science, since the understanding of the self is not there, so there are many uh, ways of studying the nature, but still some or the other confusion continues to be. Mm -hmm. So there are so many concepts in the current day science, but uh, all of them are being questioned because they know uh, clarity and completeness about any of the units. Even if you talk about the physical order, we say that existence is the innateness of the physical order. Now, whether every unit continues to be or it can get annihilated is that question today. So when we have the understanding of the innateness of the physical order, then we can have response to such questions also. So whether something can be annihilated or it can always, it will always continue to be. In a similar manner, we have confusions regarding the plants, whether plants have life or not. So there are so many questions arising out of it. What is the difference between animals and plants? So unless we are having the understanding of the self, this understanding of the nature in completeness is not possible. So one major takeaway from the discussion that we are having in the workshop is that the understanding of the self is basic to uh, understanding of every entity in the nature. Unless we have the correct understanding of the self, unless we are able to see the reality of this existence of the self rightly, completely, we'll always have some doubts and conflicts and contradictions and confusions regarding other things in the existence. So that's why we are saying that self is central to existence of a human being and the understanding of the self is central to the right understanding in completeness. Yeah, nice. So there are some questions, Didi. So I think uh, we can read out the questions or we can uh, respond to the people. Yeah, we can go on to the participants. Anuradha ji from Masuri. Ji. Yeah. Yeah, Anuradha ji, you are, un uh, you are uh, muted. So you can unmute. Yeah. So we so can take up the questions from the participants. Meanwhile, there is a question in the chat, uh, Kumar. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll go over the questions one by one, Bia. Huh. So there is a question by Dr. Mohan Rao. The plants show positive reaction to touch. How will this be explained if we believe they have no self? So again, if you look at the word positive, ultimately we are assigning the word or the sense of positivity to a particular thing. And this reaction is, as we discussed yesterday also, only the activity of recognition and fulfillment. So be it a touch of a human being or be it a touch with the air, water, soil, in every such interaction, in every such participation, what is involved is recognition and fulfillment. So the uh, plant of this touch me not, chui mui, has one kind of uh, activity going on. The plant of a neem tree has another kind of activity going on. So if you look at the constitution of the uh, units in the a particular plant, if you look at the seed of a particular plant, then the recognition and fulfillment is decided by that virtue. So if I touch a neem tree, it will not exhibit the same conduct when I touch a uh, touch me not. Similarly, uh, we can see their interaction with other entities in the nature also. So there are some plants which dry out when there is hot sun. And then there are some plants which blossom when there is a hot sun. So the recognition of the plant with a particular temperature and pressure varies from one plant to the other. So that is ultimately in the domain of recognition and fulfillment. Now we, 
many times assign the consciousness to the plant because we ourselves may not be have been able to may not have been able to understand the self uh, in completeness and that's how it appears that there is a self existing there but if you observe the plants closely you can see that there is no activity of assuming involved with the plants so whatever uh, uh, like whenever a person touches the touch me not plant it will shrink as simple as this there is no particular selection or taste involved there similarly if you look at the sunflower when the sun rises the flower will turn towards the sun it's not that the sunflower has assumed that this sun is somewhat related to me so has an affection for the sun and the sun also has affection for the plant it's not something like that it's only that the heat of the sun is related with the sunflower plant in a particular manner the same thing will not happen with an animal or a human being maybe if you look at the human being we look at a certain person one day and we do not get the response that we are expected for we do not try to look at the other person the next day so our response changes because the assumption is activity the activity assumption is there in the self of the human being but that assumption is not to be seen in a plant so we have to again make out whether as we discussed earlier also it is the activity of selecting and testing or it is only the activity of recognizing and fulfillment we have to make it out very clearly sarat sir has said that classification is there in the process of learning anything complex any large data yes so of course when you have to study so many units at a time then we have to classify them to certain orders certain categories then only the study is possible so i think we can take questions uh, further because or we have some questions written here we can go ahead with that but if there are some pertinent questions morning sir uh i have a question about uh, uh, based on uh, yesterday's discussion can i ask that yes yes so yesterday we were discussing that uh, small fishes and uh, insects uh, they do not have self uh, that is what if i am not wrong uh, that was uh, what was going on in the discussion uh, i have met one uh, scientist uh, from hyderabad Uh, she was doing her phd or rather she has completed her phd in insects communication so if there is a communication between these insects very small insects and fishes and uh, we also see that they have got eyes ears and all these uh, five uh, different sensors in their body so if they uh, do not have self uh, how does they react because these informations are going to the brain uh, to this five sensor and then these are processed in the brain under the guidance of a self so if we say that they are not having self uh, i'm little confused how it uh, can have because hum to kehte hain ki kai yoniya isme nisarg mein hoti hain to ye bhi usi tarah ka matlab kyun nahi ho sakta hai kaise hum ye aur jab hum small fish kehte hain to usko क्वांटिफाई uh, नहीं कर सकते कि किसको स्मॉल कहा जाए और किसको स्मॉल uh, नहीं कहा जाए तो उससे हमको ये पता नहीं चलेगा कि किसको नॉनवेज uh, माना जाए और किसको नहीं माना जाए इसमें थोड़ा सा कंफ्यूजन मुझे कल दिन भर रहा था जी तो जी तो वी आर डिस्कस दिस स्टडे कि द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सेल्फ इज इंडिकेटेड बाय दीज थ्री थिंग्स द प्रेजेंस ऑफ एक्टिविटी एज्यूमिंग एंड सम पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी बीइंग सो डेवलप दैट इट कैन कम्युनिकेट विद द सेल समथिंग दैट इज कॉल्ड एज ब्रेन and the third thing we can also take up but we can keep it optional that it can take signals from the human being so you can observe whether this activity or assume involved in that particular entity or not so when you look at an insect also when you look at an insect also we can see that given the same stimulus whether the response changes from time to time or not if the response to the stimulus is the same every time then it is only activity of recognizing recognizing and fulfilling if to the same stimulus the response changes then there is also activity assuming involved there so there have been people in the science also who have studied about insects so one person had studied about these ants in detail the black and the red ants and then there are some books also written uh, suggesting how these 
ants have their own kingdom somebody is the king and the others are their uh, countrymen and something like that and there is a whole novel also on that similarly there are stories about bees that one bee is the queen and the other are its slaves and something like this but if you look at the activities of the bees or the ants or certain insects ultimately you see that it is completely a physiochemical activity there is no sentient activity there is no conscious activity there because there is no assuming involved so given the same kind of physiochemical condition the same kind of response will come every time when there is a self involved in the same physiochemical condition the response changes we can observe about ourselves okay so the same cold morning of winter we can have different response if you feel that there is something meaningful for us then we get up in the morning and attend some session if you feel that not so important then we have a different response so the same temperature and pressure condition is there but our response is changing the same thing will apply to an animal uh, not exactly in terms of understanding but there is a selection involved there with an animal but if you look at the insects or the plants that kind of difference in response to different in the same stimulus is not to be seen this is something that we need to study one thing second thing we also can Uh, have a dissection of the body of that particular insect and study it and find it, find out whether there is some brain there available in the body or not if there is no brain then what will communicate with the self vinabhi yes okay. and uh, another thing which i was asking uh, when we say small fish then it is a highly debatable uh, thing because it is not quantifying any thing So, yeah, so, <clears throat> so a better way to say would be a fish which does not have a developed brain. That is being termed as a small fish. So okay, we can okay. call it fish without brain. Okay, okay. Yeah, fish without brain. Yes. Hello, Namaste, sir. Namaste, Kumar, sir. Sir, uh, just uh, this inheritance is just uh, discussed today. so it is a beautiful characteristics that you know, that is uh, being um, shown in uh, this four orders the physical order by order and animal order and uh, human order because uh, some properties of uh, this uh, like uh, the trees uh, um, uh, which uh, which gives the seed and the same seed gives uh, the similar uh, uh, similar type of tree is it that uh, the inheritance similarly in case of human being uh like you uh, say son is looking um, like his father say with some physical qualities like uh, you know, we say sometimes that oh he is uh, looking he's like his father in terms of his eyes sometimes some parts of the physical body like eyes or hair style or um, physical appearance that comes uh, to the uh, to the child so that is inherited from parents to their child in sometimes also some 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 types of uh, you can say qualities also qualities of the parents are also inherited to the the the, the child because uh, we, that comes naturally so how this process happens that uh, says, even uh, say sometimes it is felt that uh, if the parents are uh, in cool in nature and the child the child is also behaving in the same manner so is it is it also the same inheritance in terms of physical and uh, also uh, in terms of the self the transmitted to the the uh, the generation to generation some 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 um, some types of reusability of the, we can say that the, the the characteristics are being transmitted uh, automatically uh, sometimes uh, uh, maybe it may be different no but no it is shown in the uh, in the in the um, normal um, um, we can say this this is the, um, the properties uh, you can say the 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 uh, the qualities are uh, used by the, uh, the 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 child uh, the, the uh, is it the inheritance uh, we can say how the, how this happens sometimes it is being transmitted and sometimes uh, physical qualities and sometimes some uh, some sorts of uh, natural characteristics natural behaviors are being uh, transmitted this is uh, so, okay, so if you look at a human being 
we have to study the self and the body. If you look at the body, so the uh, way the body is there, the color, the height, the size, okay, or uh, different features of the body. Yes. They of course depend on the features of the body of the parents. So yeah. there is something called gene which is involved in the uh, production of the body and that genetic uh, feature continues. So if you look in the domain of body, that thing is there. Okay, so as we were talking about the seed-based inheritance in the plants, in a similar manner, the seed-based uh, inheritance is there in the body of the human being. Okay, but when you look at the human being in totality, self coexisting with the body, then that kind of feature is not to be observed. So it is a possibility that a cruel father will have a very non-cruel son or a non-cruel father will have a very cruel son. And those all things we know. Uh, we have been studying about in the history also. Right? We have been observing the similar thing in the society also. So a father who led a very honest life throughout and his son became totally corrupt. Okay, A person who robbed the society and the son becomes too generous to serve the society. So those kind of characteristics are also to be seen. So that's why we are saying that in the human being, the self is prominent. In the animal, the self is not prominent. In the animal, the body is prominent. That's why the conduct of the animal is largely decided by the breed. But in a human being, the conduct is not decided by the breed. It is decided by the state of understanding. And that is decided by the right, that is decided by the education. And education is not only formal education. So the way you interact with the children in the family, isn't it? Okay. Uh, that is also a part of education. The kind of environment that is there outside the family, okay, in the ambience, that is also education. So the conduct of the human being is largely decided by the education and sanskar and not by the body. In fact, it may be the case that father led a very honest life and the student and the child could see that my father could not fulfill certain needs of the family leading such an honest life. And he developed some abhorrence. He hates honesty. He hates a kind of life that the father has lived. And then he develops something completely opposite to the conduct of the father. Okay. Right. So that, can, no. that possibility is also there. So that's where we can see that imagination is playing a huge role here in deciding the conduct. We just observe that many times people who come to the workshop are having one kind of conduct before the workshop and they exhibit completely different kind of conduct after the workshop. That possibility is there with a the human being. In fact, uh, in many of the nodal centers, we are able to see that the people who are uh, holding the central responsibility are those who have transformed a lot. And that's why people say that if this person can transform, then certainly this content is going to be useful. <laughs> right, sir. So this, uh, this inheritance is a typical with a human being order only. And uh, the inheritance uh, for bio order, animal order, they, are, they have a specific... Uh, sir, your behavior. voice is not very clear. Uh, so you are saying inner self. The, the, the inheritance of, in case of other three orders are uh, having fixed. Uh, but uh, this uh, inheritance with the uh, with human being is being uh, changed. It's a typical, uh, typically. Uh, um, yeah, so inheritance sir. of the human being sir. is dependent on the education that a human being gets. Sir. If it is for human conduct, the human conduct will get developed. If it is for inhuman conduct, there will be inhuman conduct. Sir, sir. And education is not only really formal education. So in the family also, education is being imparted and that from the sanskar so the sanskar is determined by the formal education that we get the sanskar that we get from the family or the environment that we have outside all these develop our sanskar and that decides our conduct and this is the, the process of inheritance we are on the usb <laughs> is also uh, uh, say it again sir this process of inheritance this this USB also is a part of the the process of uh, the transmission or uh, transformation. Certainly, sir, certainly. In fact, uh, yes, yes. This is the real process of education when we are exploring the reality totality. Sir. Thank you, sir. Certainly, yes.
Dr. Sadhan Kumar Day. In the meantime, we'll also respond to some questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Ji, namaste. Uh, really, it was a uh, you no know, very encouraging talk that uh, we have got since uh, morning today. Uh, thanks to NCC IP team and uh, you, sir, for explaining so well the interrelatedness uh, in between the four orders. So as you have explained very clearly, we have uh, got some sort of uh, you know, understanding about inheritance and uh, innateness. Sir, uh, with reference to education and sanskar-based inheritance, we have got to learn because our reference point is the self only. And naturally, the bottom line is very clearly stated. That is, once we have the right feeling and right understanding, we can have that particular inheritance with reference to human beings as we are claiming. Uh, with reference to education and sanskar based uh, inheritance, sir, another thing we can add, though it is not the, it connected to the self, okay, with reference to the self, this is fine. But uh, with reference to human order, we find the wealth itself being inherited. And that ensures our physical facilities so that our education and sanskar can do better for the self-development. Once it is ensured, because physical facility, we have already uh, told that physical facilities are the requirement about uh, the human body. And uh, with reference to human self, right understanding and right feeling are there. So that is why education sanskar, whatever it brings about a change in the self or maybe a developed self as we can call. And that inheritance also, which is governed by the legal system of a state also, that also uh, is in favor of the development of the self. But most of the cases, as you have clearly uh, mentioned, that our animal consciousness uh, sometimes blocks this particular development of the self. So where that inheritance, other than the inheritance of the natural heritage that we are having, the wealth heritage that generally people get about the all physical facilities available. So that can be of our great favor for the self-development because once the physical facility is you know, uh, restored means it's of limited nature, then we can go for the self-development. So this is the right way said that you have referred to inheritance with reference to education and sanskar. That is the living part of the education. And this time, uh, this is value-based education we are referring to. Naturally, it would come to a better development of the self. That is the journey with the UHP, sir. Thank you for uh, the wide uh, you know, illustration of the whole thing uh, so that we can get into the bottom line very clearly that is right feeling and right understanding we have to go with or go along with. Only then we can think of the betterment of the society and just an equi equitable society as we are referring to. Thank you, sir, once again to the whole team and to you. Personally. Nice, sir. Just I would like to uh, clarify just one thing. So, this uh, inheritance, the word that we have selected is for Anusangiyata. And this is the closest word that we could find in English for Anusangiyata. And when we are talking about the physical facility or wealth that we inherit from the family, it is in some other sense. Uh, so that can also be given some word like heritage, as you mentioned, or something. Okay, so, but the two things are different. Another thing associated with this is that if I inherit wealth, inheritance being used in that word, or I get wealth from the parents, that may or may not complement right understanding. That is also a possibility. So if I'm getting physical facility without labor, that may also deter the development of right understanding. And that we can observe in the society also, that in many families, when there is affluence, there is abundance of wealth, and the children get spoiled. But in families where there's a tendency to labor and every human being is trying to produce 
more than what one requires through labor, then the development of the self is better. So I'll suggest that uh, one thing that can emerge from the discussion here is that uh, the parents also need not make a program for accumulation of wealth for their parents because this may also deter their development. In uh, Hindi, there is a proverb says that says, Put saputo kyo dhan sanchai, put kaputo kyo dhan sanchai. So if the child is having good sanskar, then why do you need to accumulate for the child? And if the child has bad sanskar, then why do you accumulate for the child? So in fact, it is our responsibility to first of all ensure the right understanding, right feeling in the child. And for that, we did not pass on so much of wealth also to the child, but let him or her do labor and produce more than what is required for the child on one's own. That will give a better shape to the society. In fact, most of the malpractices that have developed in the society have been owing to the passing on of accumulation of wealth from one generation to the other or passing on of post from one generation to the other. In fact, this has been questioned many times in Indian history also, whether this is uh, agreeable, whether this is uh, something to welcome or something to be denied. So one particular thing I wanted to add with your comment, sir. Yes, sir. No, I my difference point was not of accumulation, sir. I am referring to suppose we get a certain type of wealth with reference to the nation. I am not talking in reference to individual accumulation. Okay, okay. Okay, with reference to nations, and once the nation is developed, then we can do more work in this particular field of right understanding with right feeling. That was my contention. Okay, okay, sir. Yes, yes, that is fine. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, sir, my question is uh, something related with the self. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, my question is, suppose, sir, I am in a low spirit and I am not in good mood. So, in that case, my self is, how it is getting those feelings, sir? Again, only because of those preconditions and sensations, sir, or something beyond that, sir. Because sometimes I'm in good spirit, I am getting all those contents, whatever is delivered. So I get the right understanding and right feeling, sir. But sometimes I am in conflict also. I am unable to accept those concepts. Even in this UHP program, when I am in good spirit, I'm able to get those contents, sir. Sometimes if I'm not in good mood or if I'm feeling low, I'm not able to get those contents properly. So I lack right understanding and feeling. So my question is, sir, is it because, again, because of this desire, thought and expectation or something uh, beyond or uh, above that, sir, that I'm not able to clearly understand that aspect, sir? Why there is mood swing in the self, sir? That is my pertinent question, sir. Okay, ma'am. So <clears throat> it is again in the domain of imagination only with our, something to do with our desire, thought and expectation only. It's only that the imagination that we have, if the conditions outside are favorable, we have one state of the self. If the conditions outside are unfavorable, we have another state of the self. But at the base, if you see, the right understanding might be missing. So when we're talking about the natural characteristics of people living with human consciousness and animal consciousness, so with lack of right understanding, we all are wretched. Mm -hmm. With that state of wretchedness, if the conditions are favorable, we feel uh, fine. We oh. feel that, yes, we can go with this. Yes, sir. But the situations turn unfavorable, then we feel like a wretched fellow. We feel depressed, oh. we feel low, isn't it? Yeah, cool. So we see that uh. unless we have the right understanding and right feeling in completeness, we all are wretched. We don't have mm -hmm. a choice. Mm -hmm. Now, whether we feel low with this wretchedness or we resort to beguiling the other or resort to forcefulness, right? That can be a choice. Mm. So you will see that even people who are called as good people in the society, if they do not have the right understanding, uh. then when situations turn unfavorable, they will feel low uh. and try to depend on something outside to come out of that low state, uh. either by interacting uh, with somebody or by you know, uh, taking some escape route. Okay, they will try to come out of that state. Mm. There could be some people who are feeling uh, low, wretched. And to come out of that state, they resort to beguiling the other. So one example mm. could be like, for example, if I am, if I have a feeling that I have less than what I require, mm. 
then one state could be i sit inside my house and feel depressed right mm -hmm. or one may also have some uh, very uh, wrong thoughts let's say somebody has a suicidal thought or something okay this is the state of wretchedness mm -hmm. now one so the person has a feeling that one has less than what is required then he may also go for cheating the other oh. okay so one possibility was that for some months together he felt wretched sat in the house feeling depressed and then he decided to go and cheat the society so that he can earn enough mm. okay then he went for cheating and he failed then he went for robbing the other oh. okay so these all possibilities are there but at the base if we see with lack of right understanding we are of course wretched okay now whether we feel low with the wretchedness or we feel like cheating the other or we feel like using forcefulness these three possibilities are there so a single human being will see at one point of time feels low at another point of time feels like cheating or beguiling the other using cunningness right and another point of time one may feel like being cruel okay the solution emerges only when we have the human consciousness ensured okay, okay, okay. Uh, then why are we not using the terms are positive or something like that sir because we are What, always saying uh, uh, a positive feeling yeah so again how will you decide whether something is positive or negative so positivity essentially means in fact saying positive will not be the uh, very right word uh, basically we want to have a natural state many times when we say positive then it may also be a state of excitement or maybe a state of over evaluation so many times no we uh, uh, when we feel low mm. we try to listen to certain things uh, Uh, which can be very motivational but that motivation if it is not coming from right understanding can impede our uh, development can be counterproductive also can lead to over evaluation also mm -hmm. so that's why you know we are not using the word positive or negative we are trying to reach the natural state and the natural state is something which is naturally acceptable to us okay okay something naturally acceptable to us okay okay and what is naturally acceptable is something that is written on the bottom we want to have this right understanding in completeness so that we persevere every time in the same direction with the same goal and then we are able to commit ourselves to complement the other we are able to invest our mind body and wealth for the uh, development of the other Okay, okay. So I think so now we do have to mm, mm. evaluate. Yes, ma'am. Let you, sir. Please, you continue, sir. Yeah. So we do have to acknowledge that unless I am having right understanding and completeness, I am going to be in a state of wretchedness. Hmm. Hmm. So every. It's only that mm. sometimes it gets exposed in my living. Sometimes it does not get exposed in my living. Hmm. so that's why you know when we are there with ourselves okay so some thing that we discussed in the workshop also that try to be with yourself for a day and see what is your state mm -hmm. and then our inner state starts getting getting exposed to us we have so much of fear we have so much of anxiety we might have so much of frustration or the past memories troubling us mm -hmm. so much of expectation that got failed okay their pain might be there okay okay that's why you know we say that a person with lack of right understanding lives with three things one pains of the past mm. second opposition with the present and mm. third fear of the future okay and we need to come out of this we have to mm. we want to come out of this mm -hmm. in fact with a oh, deeper it's... exploration of the self we are able mm. to rightly evaluate our present state and with this it might be somewhat fearsome at times at certain moments because mm. we might not be aware that we have so much of pain inside many a times mm -hmm. okay but when we sit with ourselves we try to pay attention to our imagination our feelings our thoughts 
then we get exposed to certain things okay but that is a revealing state our present state is getting revealed to us if you allow it then gradually we are also able to see the potential inside mm -hmm. that yes i am having this wretched state but my potential is not to be not to continue with this my potential is to reach a state of happiness in continuity i have the potential to have the right understanding of the entire existence in completeness this potential is very much there in me mm -hmm. So when we say right evolution, there are only two words, but that right evolution the self does take time because we are not exposed to the preconditioning that we are carrying within. There are layers and layers of preconditionings. Yes, sir. Agreed, sir. There are uh, multiple channels of enslavement mm. that we are uh, that we have bounded ourselves with. Mm -hmm. So whatever we say as a inner voice or our mind voice, everything is related only to self. So self is the core of our yes. human existence. Yeah. So if you look at the inner voice, that is the natural mm -hmm. acceptance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So generally the block B1 and B2, no, if you see that block B1 that we're discussing is the domain of that inner voice. Mm -hmm. And B2 is the mind, something that we term as mind, the imagination okay. part. And in the imagination, we have nurtured so many things that we have borrowed from outside. So that's why we say you know, many times that this body is also not going to be a part of, is not a part of mind. So it is not going to continue with me. Okay. Mm -hmm. The imagination, the thoughts that we have borrowed from outside, the idea that we have borrowed from outside is also not me. So this body is not me. The mm -hmm. thoughts we are nurturing in the block B2 is also not me. What is mm -hmm. mine is only this, the upper block that can continue mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. These activities are going to be there with me, but the content of this imagination is temporary. Mm -hmm. Because if it is not based on right understanding, then it will not last forever. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Agreed, sir. But what will last forever is the realization, authentication, understanding, determination, contemplation. This, this content of uh, this upper block <clears throat> is going to last with me forever. Ever. If I have the right understanding and yeah. right feeling. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Right, sir. Actually, I am a motivational speaker, sir. So I usually refer to uh, you have to be mentally strong, something like that, sir. So now only I'm able to clearly understand that Whatever I have said so far, as you have to be mentally strong, right attitude, everything is related only with the self. Yeah, so we have to understand that strength also, that if it is imposed by some selection, that mm. yes, I have to be strong, it will not continue. Mm -hmm. It will be temporary. It can continue only when I have the right understanding. Then only I will persevere. Otherwise, I will try to feel that I am strong, and then I can fail, and then I feel low. Yeah, yes, sir. There will be fluctuations, sir. It won't be... There will be fluctuations. Mm. And that can be counterproductive also many a times. Because by feeling high, somebody makes some selection, let us say. Mm. And then fails miserably. Mm. Then one may have a similar negative thought in oneself. Completely opposite. Mm, 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 mm. So at one point of time, one may feel that I will win the whole world. Yes, and yes. another moment, one may feel that I am not good for anything. Mm. Thank, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Still, I have to go a long way, but I am getting clearer, sir. Nice, ma'am. Nice. You are coming in every session. You are investing yourself. That's very nice. But I am a little bit slow, sir. When others are advancing, I am slow. I am able to understand. But slowly, I am progressing, sir. That I can... I can uh, Accept and acknowledge, sir. Very nice, ma'am. <laughs> no, no, you are doing good. <laughs> you are moving very fast. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot. Nice, ma'am.